Well, praise the Lord again this morning. We want to thank God that you have joined us in our online services. And we have thank God for inviting us into your homes this morning, into your cars, wherever you are, in the hospitals, in the prisons, wherever you are. We are so appreciative of you having us to come into your space this morning as we introduce you to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are from the Laventel Open Bible Standard Churches, 103 Eastern Main Road, Laventel, Trinidad. And so we are very happy again to be with you. And I'm happy that you are part of us this morning, part of our service. And as I open the service this morning, I want to open in prayer. I, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for giving us the privilege that we can come into the homes and the people's vehicles and the institution, wherever they are this morning. We are happy that we can come in their space and introduce you to them. I'm praying, oh God, as your word go forth today in song and music, in the preach word, as it go forth, as it hit the airwaves, Oh God, it's going to have a free course. It's going to fall on good ground. It's going to bring forth fruit a hundredfold. We are praying for souls to be born into your kingdom. We are praying for souls to be delivered and to be healed. And we thank you for hearing us in Jesus' name. We have this morning leading us into a time of worship. Sister Jacqueline Bruce and her team, she's going to, they are all going to help us worship the Lord. So we invite you Bring your friends, invite your families, let them know that you are part of this great service here this morning, and we just want to welcome Sister Bruce and her team in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We are here this morning because we want to break some shackles. We want to come out of some situations in our lives. So we want to dance our way out of the shackles. Because Jesus said he lives in our praises. So this morning we just want to praise. We just want to praise. We just want to dance. Hallelujah. 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 We worship you. Jesus, my Lord, has won the victory. I 
We say, hear these praises. We are indeed grateful to you, O God, for all that you have done for us. Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Hear these praises from a grateful heart. Each time I think of you, the praises start. I love you so much. Jesus, I love you so much. Hear these praises. Hear these praises from a grateful each time I think of you, the praises I love you, Jesus. I love you so much, Jesus. I love you so much. How much so? Now my soul longs for. Oh 
love you The praises start I love you so much Jesus I love you so much Lord I love you Lord I love you And my soul sings Hail in your presence Carried on your way I love you so much Jesus I love you so much And now my soul Longs for you Longs to worship you I love you so much Jesus I love you so much I love you Jesus I love you I love you so much Jesus I love you so So much, Jesus, I love you so much. I love you because you died for me. I love you so much, Jesus, I love you so So much, Jesus, I love you so much. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We love you, oh God. Hallelujah. We worship you, God. Hallelujah. We give you praise, oh God. We give Hallelujah. you praise, your word. Hallelujah. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you cared for me in such a special way. And so I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. I love you, Jesus. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today because you care for me. 
just to splash your way And so I praise you I lift you up And I magnify your name That's why my heart is filled with praise My heart My heart My mind My soul for me way back on Calvary and so I praise you I lift you, I lift you up and I magnify your name that's why my heart is filled with praise I love you I love you I love you I love you Lord you care for me in such a special way and so I praise you I lift you up and I magnify your name that's why my heart is filled with praise my heart my heart my mind my soul That's why my heart is filled with my praise. Heart, my heart, my soul is filled with praise. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Because you died in Calvary, my heart is filled with praise. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Well, we want to thank God for that wonderful time of worship. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Sister Jacqueline Bruce and your team. And uh, at this time, we, uh, it is my privilege to introduce uh, God's servant for this morning, Brother Pastor Noel Conliffe. He is part of our pastoral staff here at Laventil. And we are so happy to have him this morning to deliver God's word to you. So we invite you to receive what the Lord is saying to you. Open your heart wide and receive from God. So could you receive our dear brother, Pastor Noel Conliffe? Praise God. Good morning to you wonderful people. Wherever you may be listening in Trinidad, all over the world, on the web, Thank you so very much for joining us and joining in prayer as we invite Holy Spirit to be with us in this time of discourse. Father, we thank you very much for who you are. Thank you that you are the one and only true and living God. And even now, Father, we invite your Holy Spirit to be with us, to lead us as we read your scriptures. We ask in the name of Jesus that you open our ears that we will hear Open our eyes that we will see. And we are careful to give you all the honor and all the glory. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. And this morning, our topic will be, Are you set for life? And if you are, what about eternity? Let me repeat that. Are you set 
for life? And if so, what about eternity? For a scripture, we are looking at Luke chapter 19, verse 10. Find it in your Bibles or your electronic devices. And I read, The Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. The Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. As we look at the book of Luke, we see that this is the key verse of this gospel narrative. The Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Jesus is the one who is teaching at this time. He is employing several methods of tuition. But in this particular instance, looking at chapter 15, he has chosen to use parables. Well, parables, as we know, is a simple story that explains or illustrates a moral or spiritual lesson or some idea, especially truth. Now, Jesus himself lends credibility to these parables because parables can be given by anyone, but the person who is giving the parable is important. It's not just the song, it's the singer. And here is Jesus, the very son of God, who has left the heavenly portals to come to earth on a mission of the Father, is speaking. The one who was before time is speaking. The one who is all-knowing is speaking, as he is empowered by the Holy Spirit. And because of this, these parables have a very deep meaning, and I want you to join me as we explore these parables. So Luke chapter 15, I am reading from the New King James Version, and we see Luke 15 has three parables. The first is the parable of the lost sheep, the second, the parable of the lost coin, and thirdly, the parable of the lost son, more commonly known as the prodigal son. I want you to join me as we read. Then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes complained, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he spoke this parable to them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulder, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine just persons who need no repentance. Now Jesus did not stop. He continued with another parable. We can name it the parable of the lost coin. Note again, the word featuring is lost. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls her friends and neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, those words again, rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I lost. Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. 
Now Jesus continues this teaching. Then he said, and this is entitled, The Parable of the Lost Son, that word lost again, or prodigal son. Then he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of good that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in the land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to, sweet, to feed swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, but when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe, put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet, and bring the fatted calf here and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Now there are some other verses and I will try to do that a bit later. From these parables, there are some things to begin. These three parables illustrate the main purpose of Jesus' earthly mission and reveals God's desire to save the lost now, during this, this time, this time on earth and for eternity. Now eternity is a time we will spend either with God or without God. And this time we have on earth is our opportunity to decide whether we will spend our time with God or without God. We learn that seeking lost sinners to bring them to redemption is of utmost importance to the heart of God. Both God and heaven rejoice whenever one sinner repents. Now in the first two stories, Jesus points out the natural value that humans place on their possessions. For example, the, the shepherd had a hundred sheep. He lost one. That's one percent. But even losing one percent, he went looking until he found that one percent. Now the woman lost one coin, most likely from a set that may have been like an adornment. One out of ten. But she too, having lost 10% of our values, went looking for it and found it and rejoiced. But the third parable wasn't a thing, wasn't, wasn't, wasn't something material. This was a man. This was a son of a man. 
And in those days, because of his actions considered to be worthless, somewhat like the tax collectors of the day and the sinners of the time. This kind of person was the one that the Pharisees easily condemned. But we see that the love of God reaches out to sinners, those who are lost, those who are in prison, those who cannot help themselves, those who find themselves trapped by vices and other situations. God is reaching out to the vilest, to the worst sinner. But how did man become lost? How did man become lost? Back to the creation account, God created man and gave man directions. Man was disobedient, and this disobedience caused a separation from God. This is a lost condition, like a fan or, a fan or electric appliance unplugged. There is no source, no source, of, no source of power, no source of guidance. And because of that, man is lost. And he cannot of himself remedy this condition. And there is a, what we call a product recall. We will see in, in the line of, of business for like motor vehicles and other such, not such things. There are sometimes a recall. There's a manufacturer's defect or default. And the manufacturer recalls these machines at his, his or her own expense. But here is Jesus making a call, not a recall because there was a manufacturer's defect, but making a recall because there, there's a love inside of him. As a matter of fact, there was deliberate disobedience of the manufacturer's instructions because God pointed out that the day that you eat of this tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall surely die. This outcome was predicted by God. So this predicament where man is lost and separated from God is one where the love of God is being shown that even in this condition, God sets out to redeem man. And I will use one scripture, Romans 5, 6. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Holy Spirit, you are here. And we're asking you to help those of us who are listening to hear clearly and understand the predicament that we are in from birth, that we need a savior. Our very nature is warped. We need to be, there's a need for a recall. And God has opened the way for us all. There's another parable that I want to close with. And I'll start with Psalm 14 verse 1. The Bible admonishes us not to call anyone a fool. But Jesus, God himself, inspired a writing here where the psalmist calls someone a fool. Psalm 14, verse 1. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. If you are saying in your heart today, there is no God, God himself says that your thinking is a foolish one. And I go to Luke chapter 12 for the parable of the rich fool. From verse 13. Reading from the New King James. Then one of the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who made me a judge or an arbiter over you? And he said to them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. He then spake a parable to them saying, the, the ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully. And he thought within himself saying, What shall I do? 
since I have no room to store my crops. So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there I will store all my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul be required of you. Then whose will these things be which you have provided? So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. I urge you today, I know that you are under the conviction of the Holy Spirit because he is here to convict persons of sin, of righteousness and of judgment. And it's not the first time you have been hearing the word of God and his love towards you and you have not been making that step. Tomorrow is not promised to you. And I urge you now to take heed, heed of the word of God. To take hold of this love that is being reached out to you. The love of God is going past all barriers reaching out to you. How can you not reach out and receive this great benefit that the Lord is making available to you? In your heart, just as the prodigal son did, you need to recognize your limitations. You need to recognize your helplessness. And you need to call out to God and say, God, forgive me. Forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for who I am. And the Lord has promised to come and to hold you, to put a ring on your finger, garments on you, the Lord has promised to do this to you. And I want to urge you today. Take great consideration. Great consideration. To what the Lord is saying to you. You need to make a decision. No decision is a decision that is being made. Obedience, we need to obey God when God speaks. Delayed obedience is disobedience. Tomorrow is not promised to you. Going to God is a privilege because it's not like coming to man. The great thing about going to God is that he is all-knowing. He already knows your thoughts afar off. He knows what you are thinking. He knows the context of your thoughts, how they are being developed. So you need not fear him. There is no need for shame because he already knows. And this is, this is a very comforting understanding. That you need to just reach out to the Lord. You need to just touch your, touch your chest. As we heard from that sinner in the Bible. While the Pharisees were saying that. God I am not like that sinner. I am not like this one. I pay my tithes. I, I do all the things I am supposed to do. The sinner said Lord. Forgive me a sinner. And the Lord Forgive that man. The Lord says, come let us reason together. Even though your sins be as red as scarlet, I will make them. Coming to God is not about cleaning up yourself before you come to God. Coming to God is understanding your condition. That you are unable to change and to say, Lord, here I am. Change me. And he says, even though your sins are as red as scarlet, I will, note the operating word, I will make you, I will change you, I will provide that change. My Holy Spirit will come upon you. 
I will cause a new nature to come into your life. A new nature. That nature that resists me. <laughs> you know, the Bible says that the man who does not know God is against God. He is warring against God. You have been warring against God knowingly and unknowingly. Here is an opportunity for you to make it right. Here is an opportunity for God to come and give you strength. Strength to resist. Strength to step out of that prison that you have been in. Strength to move you and translate you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Do not resist. Use this opportunity now to call from the depths of your heart on the Lord Jesus. Salvation it is, in, is in a man. He is, has paid the price that you were supposed to pay. He bore your griefs and your sorrows. Accept this great gift. In closing, I want to, there's the last part of that, of that parable. The parable of the lost son, the last part. We're reading from verse 25. Now his older son who was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and said, What these things mean? And the servant said to him, Your brother has come, and because he has received him safe and sound, your father has killed the fatted calf. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore his father came out and pleaded with him. So he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years I have been serving you. I never transgressed your commandment at any time. And you yet never gave me a young goat that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this son of yours came, who has devoured your livelihood with harlots, you killed the fatted calf for him. And the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. It was right that we should make merry and be glad, for your brother was dead, and is alive again, was lost, and is found. Many are in that position, where they are outside, they are away from the Father. But oh, come to yourself, and call out on the Father, and he will put a robe on you, a robe of righteousness, a ring, a ring of authority, clothe you with shoes, and call you son. You would not be just a servant, but you would be a son of God. No longer will you be an enemy of God, but you will be called a son of God. For those who have come to know the Lord for some time now, I urge you, there's a great harvest. And when sinners come to the house of God, let us not behave like those, this Pharisee, Behave like those Pharisees, the thinking of the Pharisee. Let us welcome the sinner as he comes. Let us rejoice with the angels. Let us be glad that there is salvation offered to them. Father, we thank you so very much for this opportunity to share your word. We thank you for those souls who have heard the word, who have been touched by your offering, and who in their hearts are calling on Jesus for this precious redemption that is being offered. If you have made this decision to call on the name of the Lord Jesus, I want you to make contact with us. There's a phone number I want you to call. It is 868, the code is 868 and the number is 
1-800-273-1717. Call us today at this number. There will be someone who will be willing to, to share with you, to talk with you, and to welcome you into the kingdom of God. So we give you all the honor, Father, and all the glory, and all the praise. Thank you for this great opportunity you have afforded us. Thank you for Jesus. And thank you for the Holy Spirit, who is here with us now to be our helper. And all God's people, we are grateful, Father, to give you all the honor, and the glory, and the praise. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. God be with you. Have a great day, and a great week.